But a company's due diligence program really depends on the cooperation and honesty and trustworthiness of the business sponsors. Those who are going to game the system, they're always going to be able to do so. Legal and compliance cannot always detect such kinds of misrepresentations or omissions. Testing and auditing may uncover such misconduct, but the odds are it will not be detected. Global companies face unprecedented risks and challenges in today's economy. To mitigate these legal and economic risks, companies are rapidly embracing and elevating the importance of robust ethics and compliance programs to promote positive corporate citizenship. On Corruption, Crime and Compliance, you'll hear from industry leaders and insiders about how to create effective ethics and compliance programs that will mitigate risks and maximize financial performance. Here's your host, Michael Volkov. Well, hello, everyone. Michael Volkov here. We're here for a deep dive into the Albemarle FCPA settlement with the DOJ and the SEC. Welcome from beautiful Sicily here and the beautiful month of October, just a gorgeous time. And if you are thinking of traveling to Sicily, obviously you got to let us know, but also just a great time of year to come here. Surprising number of tourists, but still a lot of fun things going on and it's just gorgeous weather. Anyways, from the gorgeous to the sublime, let's talk about Albemarle and the FCPA settlement that was recently announced. Albemarle is a specialty chemicals company located in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they agreed to pay more than $218 million to settle FCPA investigations with the DOJ and the SEC, stemming from bribery payments in Vietnam, Indonesia, and India, and control weaknesses in the UAE and China. We have some interesting new elements to the settlements here. First, Albemarle entered into a three-year non-prosecution agreement, and this as opposed to a deferred prosecution agreement, and reflects some of the benefits that DOJ is trying to encourage people to disclose FCPA violations. And in this case, they rewarded Albemarle with an NPA as opposed to a deferred prosecution agreement. So it's a three-year non-prosecution agreement. Does it get filed with the court? There's no information that's filed. And they agreed to pay a penalty of approximately $98.2 million and an administrative forfeiture of $98.5 million. Also, this is the first FCPA settlement where we applied the Compensation Incentives and Clawbacks Pilot Program, which DOJ had announced in March of 2023. And there was a reduction of $763,453 for bonuses that Albemarle withheld from qualifying employees. And by qualifying, we mean those that engaged in misconduct or were involved in supervising activities that they should have responded to in terms of red flags. The parallel SEC proceeding, Albemarle agreed to pay approximately $103.6 million in disgorgement and prejudgment interest. DOJ agreed to credit $81.9 million to the forfeiture payment against disgorgement that Albemarle agreed to pay the SEC. Hence, we get to the $218 million. The conduct surrounded between 2009 and 2017, the payment of bribes to various foreign officials through its third-party sales agents and subsidiary employees to obtain and retain chemical catalyst business with state-owned oil refineries. This was primarily in Vietnam, Indonesia, and India. And Albemarle earned about $98.5 million in ill-gotten profits. Now, applying that revised and enhanced corporate enforcement policy, not only did DOJ enter into an NPA with Albemarle rather than a deferred prosecution agreement, but they awarded Albemarle a 45% discount from the bottom of the sentencing guideline range, which is higher than normal. We would normally see a 25% or up to 50% in certain cases. But DOJ cited several factors, including Albemarle's voluntary disclosure, but we'll talk about that in a minute. There's a technical issue here because it took them over close to a year, so they didn't get the full voluntary disclosure credit because it was not reasonably prompt as defined in the 
corporate enforcement policy and the U.S. sentencing guidelines. In particular, it took them 16 months before its initial disclosure to DOJ after learning of the bribery in Vietnam. That was the first time they learned of the allocations, and that took them nine months from the time that they confirmed the bribery activity in Vietnam. Albemarle also received credit for promptly providing information obtained through its internal investigation, making regular and detailed presentations to DOJ, proactively identifying information previously unknown to DOJ, promptly responding to DOJ requests, bringing foreign-based employees for interviews in the U.S., collecting and producing documents and translations, and producing documents in ways that did not implicate foreign data privacy laws. With respect to remediation efforts, DOJ cited Albemarle's extensive remedial measures, including that they started the remediation prior to the beginning of DOJ's investigation. In other words, they started to remediate quickly upon starting their own internal investigation. They disciplined employees, including terminating 11 employees and withholding bonuses from 16 employees strengthening its anti-corruption program by investing in compliance resources, expanding its compliance function with experienced and qualified personnel, and taking steps to embed compliance and ethical values at all levels of its business organization. They also transformed their business model, changed their business model and risk management process, including implementing a go-to-market strategy that basically eliminated the use of sales agents terminated hundreds of other third-party sales representatives, such as distributors and resellers, and shifting to a direct sales business model. They provided extensive training to its sales team in restructuring compensation incentives in using data analytics to monitor and measure its compliance program effectiveness and engaging in continuous testing, monitoring, and improvement of its compliance program. Albemarle has agreed to continue to cooperate with DOJ to enhance its compliance program. And during this three-year non-prosecution agreement time period, they're going to provide regular reports, yearly reports. So let's talk about the bribery schemes. And this, to me, is a reminder, going back to the bread and butter issues that we used to deal, I think, more with was sales commissions that are used to fund bribery. And third-party agents, the classic third-party sales agent being paid high commissions as a way to funnel bribery to foreign officials at state-owned oil refineries. And they focused primarily, like I said, the bribery conduct and allegations involved Vietnam, Indonesia, and India, but there were also were control deficiencies with regard to third parties in China and the UAE. So Albemarle has three global business units, catalysts, which includes refining solutions, and that's what we're going to talk about here. They also had lithium and bromine, which weren't involved. But the refining solutions business sold catalysts through sales offices and third parties. And the president reported directly to Albemarle's CEO. They used a lot of sales agents in each of the countries here. And Albemarle was well aware of the bribery risks in the refinery catalyst business. They had internal audit reports conducted in 2013, 2015, and 2016, which identified numerous gaps in the refining solutions business's reliance on third-party agents and distributors. And internal audit, for example, cited that sales agents and distributors were paid despite incomplete due diligence, lack of a written contract, absence of anti-corruption compliance provisions, and payment of above average compensation rates. Albemarle in 2013, in response to the 2013 report, implemented some improvements, but failed to remedy all of the cited compliance gaps. Most importantly, they failed to rein in the payment of above normal commission rates. So let's start with Vietnam. And here we had Albemarle dealing with Petro Vietnam, which is a state-owned enterprise in Vietnam. And they corruptly obtained contracts at two state-owned oil refineries, Petro Vietnam, and another one described as Nissan Refinery and Petrochemicals, NSRP. In both of these situations where they obtained contracts at these two state-owned refineries, they paid through an intermediary sales agent who requested increased commissions during 
the process to pay bribes to Vietnam officials and to structure tender requirements to favor Albemarle. Now, the Vietnam sales agent had no experience selling catalysts and had only entered the Vietnam market three months before being retained. And the agent, you can see this red flag coming, touted his friendship with key decision makers at the Vietnam refinery. The agent was hired at a commission rate of 4.25%, and that was later increased to 6.5% in 2015, despite internal emails that basically revealed that the additional compensation would be used to fund bribery. The sales agent provided Albemarle with important non-public information concerning the competitors and state-owned customers. In addition, the sales agent provided valuable information used by Albemarle to submit proposals in response to tenders issued by a joint venture refinery in Vietnam and to modify tender requirements to benefit Albemarle's position. The joint venture included Petro Vietnam and Kuwait Petroleum International, also a state-owned entity. In requesting the increase in the sales agent's commission rate, the sales agent claimed that it was needed, quote, to take care of and contribute to state-owned refinery officials in order to, quote, unquote, secure orders or, quote, unquote, win the job and avoid losing the market. Albemarle terminated the Vietnam agent in 2017 after it began its internal investigation. In Indonesia, Albemarle used a third-party sales agent to corruptly obtain catalyst business with Pertamina, Indonesia's state-owned oil company. Even after the third-party intermediary had informed Albemarle that it was necessary to pay bribes to Pertamina officials to obtain business. The Indonesia sales agent paid bribes to foreign officials to obtain the contracts and also get non-public information concerning tenders and competitors' products. In 2012, Pertamina requested that Albemarle replace its existing sales agent with the Indonesia sales agent because this sales agent was very close friends, there's another red flag, with Pertamina officials and family members. The Indonesia sales agent directed the agent company not to include details in its invoices concerning tips paid to various foreign officials at the refinery. In 2013, the Indonesia sales agent told three Albemarle sales staff that he paid bribes to Pertamina officials and needed an increase in the sales commission rate. And the three Albemarle sales staff did not report the admission to their supervisor of legal or compliance or take any steps to terminate the relationship. Let's turn to India. In India, Albemarle used a third-party intermediary to corruptly retain Catalyst business with IOCL. That's India's state-owned oil company and a private company. The India sales agent also prevented Albemarle from being blacklisted for failing to meet a contract performance guarantee. With the assistance of the agent and the specific bribery payments to the refinery officials, Albemarle secured catalyst orders and secured sensitive non-public information, and they were taken off the blacklist. During the due diligence process, the India sales agent raised a variety of red flags, including his claim that the agent's board of directors included two former IOCL officials, the India Age statement that he paid bribes to prevent the blacklisting of Albemarle in India, and Albemarle's understanding that the sales agent intended to pay bribes from his relatively high 3% commission compensation. An Albemarle sales executive described the commission as, quote unquote, extremely high, end quote, far from any possible realistic justification, close quote. In addition to the sales commission payments, the India agent was reimbursed for over $100,000 in vague and unsupported expenses. Let's quickly go to China in the UAE, Albemarle there, and here we didn't have bribery necessarily, the charges, this was in the SEC settlement, Albemarle hired, paid, and increased commission rates for sales agents in China and UAE without ensuring that its payments were reasonable and for legitimate services. Albemarle obtained catalyst sales from a state-owned refinery in China based on the recommendation of a foreign official at the refinery who was related to the sales agent. The Albemarle officials omitted this family relationship in completing the due diligence questionnaire. In addition, the sales agent had no 
website and was authorized to do business in China only weeks before beginning to work for Albemarle. The China agent's commission compensation rate was high, and an Albemarle executive explained that he expected large returns because of this high commission rate. Albemarle agreed in 2014 to raise the commission rate because of the agent's good connection to the state-owned refinery. In the UAE, Albemarle used the sales agent to obtain catalyst orders from a state-owned refinery. They didn't conduct any due diligence on the agent until after it executed an agreement with the agent. And the UAE agent had close ties to the UAE government and royal family, which was contrary to the specific representations made in the due diligence questionnaire. So this was DOJ's second enforcement action of the year. And this had been a slow year for DOJ up until now. The SEC, on the other hand, has been steady this year. So now we've also seen the SEC issued, and we're going to talk about in another episode, Clear Channel, its eighth and ninth enforcement actions for the year. But the Albemarle enforcement action underscores yet again the dangers of relying on third-party agents to secure valuable contracts in the chemical, oil, and gas industries and the use of commission payments to fund bribery to secure contracts and to distort the competitive bidding process. Commissions and changes in applicable rates were directly tied to the need to pay bribes to secure contracts and obtain this non-public information. Albemarle executives were well aware that the sales commissions were too high and reflected a high probability that Albemarle planned to pay bribes. But you know what? There's more to this case than just that. First, the Albemarle enforcement actions remind us about how fragile the third-party due diligence process is and can be. Business interests were able to circumvent the due diligence process by entering into a contract before a third party even started the due diligence process. Further, in several cases, Albemarle business sponsors lied or omitted critical information concerning a prospective third party's prior relationship. And these factors are needed, obviously, for assessing potential red flags and the risk of engaging a third party. But a company's due diligence program really depends on the cooperation and honesty and trustworthiness of the business sponsors. Those who are going to game the system, they're always going to be able to do so. Legal and compliance cannot always detect such kinds of misrepresentations or omissions. Testing and auditing may uncover such misconduct, but the odds are it will not be detected. A second and equally significant lesson from the Albemarle bribery enforcement actions is the importance of internal audits and remediation. In Albemarle's case, internal audit uncovered problems with its management of third-party risks and, uses of, and use of sales agents. However, the remedial measures that had been recommended were only partially implemented. They failed to make the changes to the commission compensation arrangements that would have potentially reigned in the ongoing bribery activities. So a company, and I've seen different models, has supporting internal audit. Internal audit findings have to be amassed and collected at the board level, at the audit committee level, and overseen in terms of remediation to make sure that they're done. They can't be just suggestions or potential changes that should be done. They should have the full force of the audit committee when they are received and approved by the audit committee. And here we see that Albemarle's failure to hold the business accountable for ignoring these internal audit findings was another contributing cause to Albemarle's illegal bribery schemes. Well, that's it on an important enforcement action, a significant enforcement action. And I think we may see more coming in the last quarter of this year with regard to the FCPA and DOJ. But this was certainly an interesting case, and I'd urge you to take a look at the materials and apply the lessons learned as best you can to your own situations. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next week for another episode of Corruption, Crime, and Compliance. If you enjoyed this episode, the best way to support the show is by subscribing on your favorite listening platform. To learn more and connect with Michael Volkov, go to volkovlaw.com.